Hi everyone, I'm Jemima. I'm the International Sales and Product Manager at Hashem Children's Group. We've got a really fantastic lineup of titles to tell you about, from magical debuts to key brand authors to non-fiction. So I hope that you enjoy uh, and you find something to get excited about. I'm Elaine, Senior Commissioning Editor for Picture Books here at HCG. I wanted to talk to you about one of our highlights for 2022, The Fantastic Brave Dave by Giles Andre and Guy Parker Rees, who you probably know are the amazing creators behind the best-selling Giraffes Can't Dance. I've just received the advances and I'm very excited to show you the fabulously foiled cover. In the story, we meet Dave the grizzly bear who is in awe of his big brother Clarence. Clarence is big, brave and strong, all the things that Dave thinks a grizzly bear should be. Dave wishes he could be more like Clarence until one day he discovers that bravery comes in different guises and that this grizzly bear doesn't need to be more Clarence, he needs to be more Dave. This picture book is a celebration of individuality, self-acceptance and finding the courage to stand out. It's a perfect book for encouraging all little ones to take pride in being themselves and showing them that they don't have to be like anyone else, not even their older brothers or sisters. Phoebe is a beautifully illustrated tale about the wisdom and experience of old age. It has a timely message about community and helping each other through difficult times. From the talented creator of the award-winning book Little One, Phoebe is a flamingo that has been with her flock for longer than anybody can remember. When the lake dries up, the flamingos are forced to leave their home. With Phoebe's wisdom and experience, she's able to encourage the young chicks to make the long journey, and in return, they inspire her. With stunning charcoal illustrations and just a hint of pink, Joe Weaver brings this heartwarming tale of love and respect for the elderly to life. Hello everyone, I'm Jacqueline Wilson and long ago when I was a little girl, this was my all-time favourite book. I absolutely loved the Magic Faraway Tree books by Enid Blyton. So imagine my delight when I've been asked to write a brand new adventure for the Magic Faraway Tree series. It's certainly got new characters, new children, um, lots of exciting new adventures with dragons, with unicorns, bouncy castle land, all sorts of different things and yet it's still set in the traditional beautiful world of the enchanted wood. I think it's just the sort of book that children will like and remind them how wonderful that the original stories are. I feel very pleased and proud. Now these are long overdue. The first two titles in the Famous Five series as full colour graphic novels for the very first time. These were created by Hachette France and have that perfectly retro, charming feeling that only the French can create. We've seen increased demand for graphic novels in the middle grade space and the adventures of the Famous Five translate perfectly to full colour illustrations. These are 64 page paperbacks, publishing at the perfect time as this year is the 80th anniversary of Enid Blyton's most popular series, The Famous Five. Hello, my name is James Bishop and I'd like to introduce you to my new book, The Worst Day Ever. It is a classic tale in many ways of a, a young girl who's having a pretty awful day. It starts with her stubbing her toe, always painful and escalates from there really to, well, the inevitable destruction of her entire planet. Um, after just a tiny little mistake by a, an alien friend that she meets along the way. Now, if you like funny books, if you like aliens, if you like spaceships, if you like poo-scented air fresheners, then this is the book for you. I really, really, really hope that you enjoy reading The Worst Day Ever. Fairies are the number one theme in young fiction series. So a series centred on magical school adventures with themes of ecology are the winning combination. Filled with gorgeous illustrations, Fairy Forest School is a new series which centres on a group of friends attending the school and discovering what kind of fairies they will become. In the first book, Poppy discovers a baby otter who needs her help. Poppy and her friends come to the rescue, earning a magic seed and in the process defeating Lady Nightshade for now. 
We're publishing three books this year, spread four months apart, and they will each include world-building end matter, such as quizzes on what kind of fairy are you, um, and activities that children can do at home to look after the natural world around them. I'm Kathy Weeks and I'm super excited to tell you a little bit about my new book, What's New, Harper Drew. This is a brand new series for middle grade and I cannot wait for you to read it. What's New, Harper Drew follows Harper. She's a brilliantly funny, witty, bright, feisty, loyal girl. The kind of girl that anybody would want as their best friend. But there's just one problem. She is surrounded by drama all of the time. Her family just seem to attract it wherever they go. So she decided to start writing a diary as proof of all the chaos and the mayhem that's happening all around her all of the time. I hope that children, when they read this, will laugh out loud, but also feel a little bit inspired that they can have that kind of confidence and they can be who they want to be too. Hello, I am Andy Sagar, author of Yesterday Crumb and the Storm in a Teacup. Uh, I'm extremely excited and so, so grateful um, that her story will soon be coming into the world. Um, it tells the story of a girl named Yesterday who was born with fox ears and runs away from the circus one day to get a job in a magical walking tea shop uh, with flamingo legs that allow it to travel the world, bringing tea to all souls who might need it. Um, as a witch's tea shop, it of course comes complete with all kinds of wonderful things. A stable for the unicorns whom they milk for their tea, um, a, a, an orchard of wishes where wishes grow like fruit, um, and of course a whole menu of magical wonderful teas, like a tea that lets you turn into animals, or a tea that lets you control plants, or a tea that lets you bewitch the weather, or even just a simpler tea that will mend a broken heart or fill you with inspiration and good dreams. Um, I'm so, so lucky and happy that uh, her story will soon be coming into the world and I'm just so excited for everybody to meet yesterday and her friends and join them on their adventures. Thank you. Set in the blustering beauty of the Lake District, The Bird Singers is a spine-tingling mystery about two sisters, Leia, almost 13, and Izzy, 11, who investigate a family secret and the truth is stranger than their wildest dreams. An old woman in the garden, a dead bird in the road, and a blurred photograph set the sisters off on their adventure. And all the while, they're being stalked by a feathered villainess, a monster escaped from myth. A tale full of suspense, danger, peanut butter fudge cake, and a girl who would do anything to save her family. Hello, my name is Hannah Durkin and I'm incredibly excited that my debut middle grade fantasy, Zena Starborn and the Sky Whale, comes out this year. Zena is a brave and determined 11 year old who dreams of escaping the polluted city of Ravenport to travel above the smog into a world filled with incredible airships, fearless explorers and magnificent sky whales. So when she wins the chance to visit the Willoughby Whale, a luxurious city sized hotel built on the back of a flying whale, she grabs it. It's a place where her wildest dreams could come true, yet it is also crawling with spies, smog rat pirates and deadly secrets. Unfortunately, the only person there to help her discover the truth is Jackson Willoughby, heir to the Willoughby fortune who just seems to be terrified of everything. Zena and Jackson must overcome their differences and rethink everything they thought they knew about their world if they are going to survive their journey to the truth. My inspiration for Sky Whales came from hearing that a recording of Whale Song was sent up into space in the 1970s. It got me thinking about what would happen if the first sky explorers came across giant sky whales, just like the first explorers of our oceans had encounters with sea creatures. What kind of world would that create and how would the sky whales be treated by humans? 
It's a story I hope will inspire readers to be curious about their world, to strive to do what they think is right and to have the courage to follow their dreams. Hunter has perfect aim with a bow and arrow, but somehow the wind keeps getting him into trouble. And Luna is the perfect high school student, but the pressure from her parents is really beginning to take a toll. Plus, she seems to be followed everywhere by these strange fireflies. Drawn together, Hunter and Luna navigate their warring family's darkest secrets, and as everything around them begins to fall apart, they must figure out who they are meant to become and what they are fated to do. Emily's first book, The Astonishing Colour of After, was a New York Times bestseller. An Arrow to the Moon is her second YA novel. It's based on Romeo and Juliet and includes the magic of Chinese mythology. The Bone Spindle is the tale of Sleeping Beauty with a gender-flipped twist. Set 100 years after Prince Briar Rose and the kingdom have been put to sleep by the Spindle Witch, witch hunters are doing all they can to stop the great kingdom of magic from ever being restored. But the fallen kingdom holds many relics and Fior, known as Fee, is a talented treasure hunter with a curse on her. When she pricks her finger on an old spindle, not only does she alert the witch hunters to her presence, but she awakens the ghost of the sleeping prince, who believes a single true love's kiss will break the sleep of death. Now she has another curse to break. Fee must team up with Shane, a stroppy huntswoman with an almost an axe almost bigger than herself to find the prince's body and to free him and herself from the curses. Throw in an emerging LGBTQ romance between Shane and the mysterious Red, tension between Fee and the ghostly Briar Rose, and nightmarish beasts and witch hunters after them, this isn't going to be an easy journey. And if Fee can break this curse, will the world really truly return to what it was? Or has the spindle witch got more threads up her sleeve? I do hope you enjoy this fractured fairy tale retelling. A Far Wilder Magic is a richly imagined, completely atmospheric YA fantasy romance. It's set in a dark gothic village where Maggie lives in an abandoned mansion filled with ghosts. An outcast from the town, Maggie has made peace with her hermit life. That is, until Wes, a down-on-his-luck alchemy apprentice, comes knocking. The two team up to hunt a mythical fox creature, hoping it will be a chance for both of them to find redemption. But as the hunt takes over, the pair are drawn together as they uncover a darker magic that may put everything they love in peril. I wrote this first draft of this book in 2015, and at the time I was watching a post-apocalyptic show that shall remain nameless, and a few things kept bothering me. First, I wanted to know where all the queer characters were. All of these survivors were straight and boring. I've heard that they've since changed that, but it was a little myth at the time. These writers created this whole post-apocalyptic world where queer, queer people just didn't survive. And if we can be completely honest, I'm pretty sure that we would. Queer people are very adaptable, and we're used to the world trying to kill us, so. The other thing I noticed was how dark and depressing it was. There just never seemed to be any hopeful scenes or any levity. It was always Everyone's miserable, everyone's a monster, and everyone's going to die. Now here's 17 seasons worth of trauma porn. So I wanted a book that had those moments of joy and hope, and I wanted an adorable, funny romance that blossoms in the bleakest environment possible. And in 2015, I thought, pandemic. That was right. That was really right. But through all of the edits and changes that have happened with the book, it's always remained a love story. I hope you all enjoy it, and again, I appreciate all the hard work you do helping readers find books like mine. Thanks. Drawing from his own life growing up as a painfully shy child, best-selling author Ben Brooks, who you'll know from Stories for Boys Who Dare to be Different, explores what it means to be quiet. In You Don't Have to Be Loud, Ben normalizes shyness, outlining stories of famously shy people from the past and present. Charles Darwin, David Bowie, Greta Thunberg, Rosa Parks, Beyonce, revealing the stories of successful adults who grew up shy but didn't let it get in the way of their passion and creativity. Completely unique to the children's market, this book will help shy kids to thrive in their own quiet way, 
reassuring them that they don't have to be something that they're not, but instead they can be proud of who they are amongst even their loud friends. Hi there, it's Dr. Ange here, frontline NHS paediatrician, TV presenter and best-selling author. My new book, Brain Power, is a toolkit to help children aged seven and above understand their unique brain. In it, they'll discover how the brain works, how to train it to get better at tricky stuff, and how different people think in different ways. Ultimately, Brain Power will give readers the confidence to understand and love their brain and themselves. Hi, I'm Dr. Camilla Pang. Um, I'm a scientist and author, and I'm really excited to tell you about my new book, uh, Perfectly Weird, Perfectly You, a scientific uh, survival guide to growing up. Um, so I was diagnosed with autism at the age of eight, and science helped me uh, make sense of the world. Um, so Perfectly Weird, Perfectly You um, shows readers um, how science can actually help them growing up. For example, asking the questions that a lot of children feel but can't quite articulate, such as managing your emotions, peer pressure, confidence, um, where arguments can actually form like discussions and collaborations that happen in science. So all the things that science has pinned down for me as a process I've tried to replicate in the book. I hope that my book will help children learn more about what makes them tick and to understand that it's completely normal to be perfectly weird. I uh, can't wait for you to read it. Hello, I'm Grace Glendinning, commissioning editor for the wonderful book, Wonders of the Night Sky. Um, I'm really pleased to share with you um, this book from international award-winning author, professor, and astronomer, Raman Prinja. The book takes readers through the amazing features of the universe that anyone can just see with the naked eye, or a simple pair of binoculars if you want to get a bit closer, and it explodes them on the page. Um, the spreads in the book describe what you see, how it got there, and the science of why. So that brings us to the illustrator. Uh, Jan Bieletsky's artwork for this bit book is truly special. Um, Jan recently illustrated the book Unlocking the Universe by Stephen and Lucy Hawking. So he has a really honed skill and a, a, a real passion for presenting astronomical facts with just so much style. Um, so we really appreciated his attention to detail throughout and the explosive sense of motion he creates is, is really crucial for drawing readers in to the wonders of the night sky. Real Life Dragons and Their Stories of Survival is an information book about the real life dragons that exist in the world today. For centuries, dragons have captured our imagination, guarding troves of treasure and breathing out fire. They appear in many myths and legends around the world. While there is sadly no such thing as a fire-breathing dragon, there are still alive dragons in the world today. One of them can even fly. This book brings together the stories of 10 real life dragons with fascinating facts mixed with some folklore. From Komodo dragons to dragon snakes, flying dragons and leafy sea dragons, this beautiful book contains full color photographs of each of the dragons alongside illustrations narrating their stories. Written by award-winning author Anita Ganeri, we find out how these extraordinary creatures were discovered, read the myths surrounding them, and learn how they have adapted to survive. This high interest approach to the natural world also covers science topics such as biodiversity, evolution, habitats, and adaptation. It will fascinate any young readers interested in animals, nature, or mythical beasts.